about you to you about union between you and God. Say co-working, co-mission, but this is not a work. This flow from an intimate relationship, a union between you and God. You have been created to be in union with God. We lost that as human beings because our ancestor has listened to Satan. So he got the nature of Satan. Then God himself became an Adam. Say an Adamite. He himself became an Adam. So the Bible calls him the last Adam. Say the final solution. The final Adam. The final man. The final solution. The fulfillment of every promise to human beings. Jesus. To take us again, to meet us on the level where we are. Did you hear what I'm preaching? He meet us on the level where we are, but not to leave us on the same level, but to lift us to the level He wants us to be. What is that level where He wants us to be? He wants to take us to, to the original state in which He created us. Say His likeness. Amen? His likeness. His nature. He meets us on the level where we are as sinners. But He's never going to leave you on that level. He wants to lift you to the level where you can be in union with Him as He has planned with Adam. And Eve. And it is on that level where we can be useful in His hands. Because on that level where we in union with Him, we can become co-workers with Him in a co-mission with Him. Where His vision become our vision. His destiny become our destiny. His purpose become our purpose. And in this we benefit greatly by experiencing the fulfillment of being in union with God. No need. Be in union with God. It's not just to be in a certain state of mind or spirit. But to be very, very much involved in what God wants to do. To become His hands and His feet. To be on the same, the same level as Adam and Jesus. Say the last Adam. The fulfillment of every promise to human, human beings, mankind, is in Jesus Christ. It is actually locked up in Jesus. How can you unlock it? By being in union, union with Him. It cannot be unlocked by good teaching. It cannot be unlocked by knowledge. It cannot be unlocked by nothing but union with God. Then Jesus opened himself to you. Let me tell you something. I can tell you a secret. After tonight will not be a secret to you anymore. Jesus hide himself from people who come to him with wrong motive. He said, Pastor, how will Jesus do this? He spoke in parables to many people. The disciples came and said, Jesus, why do you speak in parables to them? He said, so that they will not hear. What? Because he will not reveal himself to a people that does not want to be in union with him. He will not. So what I tell you tonight is not, I don't preach missions to you. I speak union with Jesus to you. When you're in union with God, His vision become your vision. His burden become your burden. His desire become your desire. His mission, you become, say, co-mission with Him. His works, you become a co-worker with Him. He opened Himself. He said, if you love me, you will obey my commandments and me and my father. And then it also says, and then you will be loved by my father. It says like this, if you love me, 
you will obey my commandments. And you will be loved by my Father. And me and my Father will come and dine with you. We will reveal ourselves to you. And when he reveal himself to you, open himself to you, you will understand and you will pick up his vision and his heart and his mission and his desire for mankind. So nothing, I can preach tonight to your pastor. I can say to you, please join me in missions. I can say, please, we do deliverance. Please join me in healing the people. None of these things need, must be followed. But desire must be union with Jesus. Say union with God. Out of this union with God, all the other things will flow. It will be natural. You don't, it will not be effort. It will be natural flow of wanting to do His will. No one have to tell you, you must do that, and you must do that, and you must do that. Say, out of this union with God, God's desires will flow in your heart. His mission, His purposes, everything. Hallelujah. No one will have to tell you, you must be involved with missions. You must tell someone about Jesus. You will have a desire to be involved. Say, thank you, my Jesus. So why did Jesus came? To get you involved in his mission. To get you involved with himself. That's why I always say to you, he meet you on the level where you are, but he will not leave you on that level. Pray, Lord Jesus, save me completely. I am safe, but save me completely. Pastor, what are you talking about? The angels are all ministering spirits to minister to those who are being saved. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Ask the guy next to you, are you okay? Hmm? Say union with God. So Jesus came to meet you on this level, but he will not leave you on this level. That's why I speak to you many times. I speak to my friends. I speak to people. When I see you go wrong, I speak to you. I say, come on, close to Jesus, man. Come on, what's your, what's your nonsense? Oh, pastor, you don't love us. Man, I love you. That's why I speak to you. I know if you steal money, take one pit of maize. One. If you sow one pit of maize, how many, one plant will come. In one maize plant, how many heads is there? A good maize plant. How many heads are there? 1,750 out of one maize seed. The Bible promises us, whatsoever a man sow, he will reap. Whether good seed or bad seed. Now this will make you very careful concerning what you sow. But will make you, give you a lot of joy if you sow good seed. Hallelujah. Whatsoever a man sow, he will reap. Now think for a minute. You sow in love. One portion, let's call it a portion. One portion of love. You sow one portion of love. One portion of grace and forgiveness and mercy. One portion. How many portions will arise for you? How many? 1,750 of portions of love, mercy, and kindness will arise for you. Give God a hand. 